Hey, hey, it's Rebecca, and you are listening to Resilient by Design. Today, I'm talking about the value of having an online presence as a designer, as a business owner. You know, for many years, I struggled with this idea behind Instagram. Is it just a vanity vanity play? Like, we're just competing against each other. But I am here to tell you that it is super duper valuable, and I'm going to explain why you need to have an online presence to grow your business. All right. (laughs) I'm Rebecca Hay, and I've built a successful interior design business by trial and error, podcasts, online courses, and so many freaking books. Over the last decade, I've grown from an insecure student to having false starts to careers, and now I'm finally in the place where I want to be. Throughout my journey, it's been pretty obvious that I'm passionate about business and helping other entrepreneurs do the same. Each week, I'll share tangible takeaways from my own experience and the experiences of other badass women to help you build your confidence and change your business. Are you as tired as I am working in a bubble? I mean, shoot. It's time to maybe socially distance with other people. That is why I love coming to the Collective Workspace. If you are someone who is looking for a little bit of stimulation, a lot of beauty, the Collective Workspace is a really great place to go. It is a co-working space for designers, architects, and builders in Toronto, and they're opening a second location this spring. They have flex workspace and offices starting at $120 a month. There's boardrooms, a podcast booth, which is where I am right now, concierge storage, and a trade-only design library. You can find out more or if you want to book a tour, go to thecollectivetio.com. All right. The importance of establishing an online presence. People don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. Have you heard this before? This is Simon Sinek. He has this very famous TED Talk, which you can look up. And he talks about how it's not about what you do. It's about why you do it. What is your purpose behind the thing that you're offering? And social media, and specifically Instagram, in my opinion, because that's where my expertise lies, it is a very powerful tool to share your why. You know, for many years, I mean, I did Instagram just because I really am obsessed with marketing. I realized probably my other calling in life was just to do marketing because that's my favorite part now of my entire business. I finally recognize it. As much as I love design, I get so amped up and excited about marketing strategy and creating content and doing all that stuff. When I have the time to do it, I'm really into it. So initially, I was really, I just was drawn to Instagram because it was very visual. Um, I didn't mind showing my face and talking in stories. I love sharing pictures. And over time, I would get questions from people saying like, yeah, does Instagram really work? Like, I don't know. I haven't really gotten any leads from it. I feel like the people who follow me on Instagram aren't my ideal client. And at the time, I thought to myself, yeah, that sounds about like me. And I was very honest, as I am. And I said, yeah, no, I I just really enjoy Instagram. So I do put a lot of effort into it. But I don't think that it's getting me any business. In fact, at the time, I did not have anyone who came to me because of Instagram or anyone who came to us who'd even seen our Instagram, to be honest. But over time, two things have happened. One thing, we have built and established a brand and a presence online. And two, more people are online. It's just a fact. So, Being active on a platform, in my opinion, is really important. And until recently, I wasn't really getting leads, if you will, or potential clients through Instagram. Now, almost every person who comes to us has seen our Instagram. Now, that doesn't mean that they go- they searched us on Instagram and they found us. It could be that their friend mentioned me and then they looked us up on Instagram. It could be that they told a friend that they needed a designer and the friend followed us on Instagram. Like there's all kinds of ways, but every single person has seen our Instagram and most of them have seen our website. 
listen carefully to that. Everyone has seen our Instagram and most of them have been to our website. Usually it's the serious buyers who also go to the website, but I want to let you know your ideal clients are out there and it might take time to get in front of them. In fact, I think if you're starting out now, you have a leg up because when I started out on Instagram, it was a pretty new platform and people weren't really going there for designer, designer, sorry, but, <clears throat> but now people go because they want to see your feed. They want to see your style. They want to see if you're legitimate. Do you have any followers? Do you post? What type of work do you do? It matters. I would suggest that you want to be active on the same platform as your ideal client because this gives you a chance to educate them on why you do what you do, right? And build a rapport with them even before they reach out to you. Being present online builds trust. And so much of what we do as a designer involves trust. You are building a relationship and putting forth your best efforts to show your ideal client, you know, why you're the best person to work with them. It makes you more relatable to them. And I've said this before, but, you know, I have been to consultations pre-pandemic <laughs> where the person came up to me. I arrived at the door. I was like, oh, hi, I'm Rebecca. They're like, oh, my God, I feel like I already know you. And they gave me a hug. And I'm like, uh, who are you? <laughs> what? And I didn't necessarily have a big Instagram following at the time. I mean, big-ish. But <clears throat> they, they got to know me through my posts and through my stories. And so what it did is it gave me a leg up when I got to their house because here it is. They already kind of have a good sense of who I am as a person. So they know that our personalities are probably going to align. And now it's just figuring out all those finer details. So it helps also increase your conversion rate from a consultation to a paid client. Or consultations are paid, just want to be clear about that, but to a full service project. Um, <clears throat> you know, being active on social media, whether it's Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook is also a really great, powerful place. It reinforces your brand. So it's something else that they get to know your personality, understand who you are, why you do what you do, but then they can really start to understand what you offer your ideal client and what your brand message is. They get to see the visuals, right? They get to see, oh, Rebecca really likes blue. Like it's pretty well known now within my little interior design circle up here in Toronto that uh, I like to decorate with blue. Fun fact, Blue was never my favorite color growing up. I always liked pink and red. In fact, red is technically my favorite color. But <laughs> I don't know why. I love to decorate with navy. It's like the Ralph Lauren and Tuck It Girl in me. Um, I think I was born in the wrong, in the wrong like geographic location. I should be by the sea. Anyhow, I digress. Um, but it really does help to reinforce your brand. And that way too, you can attract clients that are attracted to the type of design style you love. And now I get this question a lot. A lot of people will say to me at this point, but Rebecca, I don't have a portfolio that A, reflects my personal style because I've just had to do whatever comes my way and those clients don't have the same taste as me, but I do it for the money. Or B, like I just don't have a portfolio. And to which I say, I totally get it. Do your best to find one room. Can you decorate or design one room in your house or for a friend for free? and photograph the freaking bejesus out of it. Like literally, there. if you pay close attention, and I'm not going to mention any names right now, but <laughs> I can think of a handful of influencers on Instagram who call themselves designers, who just show the same pictures of the same space over and over and over again. And they have so many followers and it looks beautiful. I have to say, like, I look at their feet, I'm like, oh, that's lovely. And I'm like, oh, I've seen that. I've seen that table lamp like 25 times on their feed, but this is like a fresh perspective and it looks really good. They've got a good sense of style. They've got a good eye because that's what Instagram will show or social media, mostly Instagram. Um, and then also you can share other people's work as long as you tag them. You make it very clear it's inspiration. I do this from time to time when I want to share some love and I want to showcase like here, like this is what I really want to do. Like you see the house that's made of all cedar shake with that cute door, like, oh, isn't this dreamy, right? Because then you're also showing your potential client what you're aspiring to do. So I think that that is okay because it will enforce your brand. 
it also, um, sorry, <clears throat> losing my breath. Oh my God. You're offering a service, right? Which would be decorating, design, staging, but really, you know, if you paint the picture well with your posts and you engage with your audience, you are selling a lifestyle. And really as designers, isn't that what we're doing? Like we are giving our ideal client this lifestyle where they can come home, everything's in its place. They don't have to organize. They don't have to do extra work. They can entertain. They can show things off. It is a lifestyle. And if you can show them that lifestyle in your social platform, they are going to gravitate because they are going to see you. And I don't actually think I do a great job of this, but there are a lot of um, designers and influencers out there who do. Um, And it will sell that ideal client of yours. Like maybe you love to go golfing, right? And you post pictures of yourself on the golf course or you're in your stories. That will attract an ideal client who also has the same hobbies as you. You know, I've been posting a lot about skiing. My family's um, joined a ski club and we're posting a lot about it. So I'm starting to get people come out of the woodworks and be like, oh, hey, I'm a member at this club or hey, this is what it was like when my son was learning and I'm able to connect with people on a different level. It also widens your audience when you have an online presence. It will bring you forward to the people that maybe wouldn't have heard of you before or maybe they wouldn't even have seen you published in a magazine. Or even if you've been on TV, like just because you've been on TV doesn't mean everyone knows you exist. Online has such a wide reach and you can post things over and over again and people will not get bored of it. You can approach your online presence with thinking, okay, I want people to find me. And there's like, that's a whole other podcast and marketing. And we get into that in my momentum marketing course, but, um, But really, it does help you appeal to a broader audience. People can find you from other countries, from other towns, states, cities, right? A friend can recommend to a friend. They might say, hey, you're in California? Oh, I follow this really great designer, and she's in California too. You should check her out. Okay, those are just a few of my top, I guess, reasons that I think it's really important to establish yourself online. Um, And the reason I say this, I like, I can do lots more podcasts on like specifics about what to do and how to do it and what I do anyhow. Um, But I would tell you that if you're, if you're hesitant to do something, just do something. Don't worry about it being perfect. You know, I go, I go up and down with my Instagram involvement engagement lately. I've been so busy I post a few posts here and there. I'm not posting a lot of stories and I'm like, oh, Rebecca, come on. You got to get back into it. That's okay. You can't be all on all the time, but be as consistent as you can. Post a picture, start to build your portfolio. That is where people go to see an overall view of who you are. It's like a quick snapshot. It's like in like a second or 30 seconds, they look at your feed and they're like, oh, this is what she's about then they might say, hmm, I'm going to go check out her website. All right, guys. I hope that was helpful. I hope that gives you a little bit of inspiration, motivation. Do put in the work for your online presence. It will pay off. I tell you, I'm seeing it pay off in dividends right now. It's been incredible. The people who come to me who already follow me on Instagram know so much about me, my team, how we work. It makes the onboarding process so much easier. Okay. That's all I got for you today. Don't forget to join our Designer Meetup Facebook group. It is free to join. We will link that in the show notes. And leave us a little review, if you will. That would be wonderful. We'll see you soon.